Hello, uh, this video I'll be doing an introduction to the false position method and tell you how it relates to the bisection method which I covered in uh, other videos. So the um, bisection method and the false position method are similar in that they're used to find the roots of equations and this is done in a given interval x sub l to x sub u that is the lower limit and this is the upper limit and for the false position method you also have to calculate your xr value which is your approximation and this one's a little more lengthy compared to the bisection method here xr equals x sub u minus f of x sub u multiplied by xl minus xu divided by f of xl minus f of xu. And then after we calculate our xr value or our approximation we'll need to calculate the product of f of xl and f of xr and similar to the bisection method you'll either get a positive or negative value which will indicate which direction to search and it'll also tell you what your new uh, limits are for the range of your search so let's look at the positive case if the product is a positive value then you'll search to the right or in other words your XR value will become your new lower limit and the upper limit will remain unchanged and on the other hand if the product of f of xl and f of xr is a negative value then we'll actually be searching to the left so xr will become the new upper limit and this time the lower limit will remain unchanged and this is just one iteration and this will give you once this is done you'll have a new range which means a new lower and upper limits all right, so you're probably wondering how are the bisection method and the false position method uh, similar and different. So we'll discuss that a little bit. So they are essentially the same in the sense that you're trying to find roots of an equation, but they're different in the approach. So there's two main differences I want to point out. There's the calculation that's different and also when you're uh, visualizing these two methods there's a important difference there. Alright, so if we look at the calculation so the path of the calculation is very similar. You're going to have your lower and upper limits. You're going to calculate an XR value and then you're going to test at the sign of the product of f of xl and f of xr. But the important difference here is how xr is calculated. So xr is the, in terms of calculation, the only difference is how xr is calculated. So for the bisection method, xr is equal to x of l plus x of u divided by 2, and this makes xr the midpoint. So when you have your x of l and your x of u, xr will be exactly in the middle, equally spaced from both sides. And that is where the false position method is different. This is not true for the false position method. Your XR will be somewhere in here, but it will not always be the midpoint. So the 
for the false position method, xr is this lengthy equation that uh, I introduced on the last uh, slide. xr equals xu minus f of xu multiplied by x sub l minus xu all over f of xl minus f of xu. And I'll show you a brief uh, visual example um, for the false position method, how xr is calculated visually with the example f of x equals x cubed minus 5. Alright, so here we have a plot of x cubed minus 5 where the data is not exactly equally spaced. Here this point is negative 5 and this point is 5 and up here we have our y axis going up to 150. So the false position method, what that does is it takes your upper um, limit, f of x u, it evaluates that point, and it also evaluates the lower limit, f of x l, so it evaluates both the lower and upper limit. And if you could imagine in your mind, if you were to draw a line between these two points, if you were to imagine what that would look like, it would be somewhere along there. And where that imaginary line in your mind crosses the x-axis, that is what your xr value will be. So I took the liberty of doing that graphically. So here, this line intersects with f evaluated at the lower limit and your function evaluated at the upper limit. And it goes through both those points. It's a straight line. And it goes through the x-axis at this point right here. And that's 0 0.20. And you could check for yourself using the lower limit, negative 5, and the upper limit of 5. And calculating your XR value, you will get 0 0.2 for the equation f of x equals x cubed minus 5. And as you can see from our graph, that point right there, 0 0.20, is right there. Alright, hopefully you'll join us in the next video, and we'll uh, probably do another uh, example with the false position method, and uh, actually do the crunching of the numbers. Alright, uh, once again, uh, thanks for watching. Hope this helped. And